Hi, it's Corey here, NZC Dog. Thank you for joining me on this quick demonstration of my function generator circuit, uh, which was built using the XR2206 uh, function generator IC, an old school analog chip from the 90s, which is still available today, and is an excellent performer and a really easy build. Uh, so what we're looking at right now is the output of my Tenma oscilloscope, which is plugged in via the USB port into the computer, and uh, the onboard software is just um, showing you this. Now there's a wee bit of lag in terms of uh, frames or whatever, that's just due to uh, the output going through USB. So if we have a look here, the, the amplitude of uh, channel 2 which is connected into is basically 5.5 volts, 5.58 volts and our frequency is 354 hertz. Now there's quite a bit of play um, with this circuit. Now I've, I've used a, uh, a, well I recommend using a, a 10 turn pot for the fine tuning and what that means is that uh, you can get a lot more resolution in terms of your accuracy for the frequencies you're wanting to dial up. Now the, the, the amplitude here 5.5 volts is basically the maximum you get before you start getting uh, the presence of uh, reasonable distortion due to sort of uh, clipping and that's pretty much a byproduct of the fact that um, I'm running this on 12 volts so uh, as we uh, wind this up, you know, to 6.3, 6. We're starting to get, you know, see, look, it's starting to clip up there, and it sort of, it's just hit the roof there, hasn't it? With the, uh, so it's not a symmetrical waveform there. So if I wind this back, I think you could, uh, safe, you know, you can safely say that 5.5 uh, volts, you're going to get a nice, clean sinusoid wave. Now, if I flick the switch here. This is the sine triangle switch, and what this does is, um, because this is a shared output between sine and triangular functions, um, basically there's the level control which you use for your sine wave, you're going to have to also use for your triangle wave. And so if I just wind this back a bit, uh, suddenly it brings that out of distortion. And so we're about 5 volts there, you know, if, about the same, we're looking about the same sort of headroom really. Okay. Right, so th so um, I could also now show you uh, the range switch. So right now the range switch is set in the middle position, um, and uh, between these ranges, I'm just playing with this control now using my ten turn pot. Between, I'm winding it down. Now there's uh, the lowest frequency. If I turn this all the way down in the mid, is about 86 hertz. And uh, when it's in the low, it goes down all the way down to uh, about 1.5 hertz. Flick it back to mid. Okay, there's a bit of overlap between the ranges, and that means basically that uh, if you're trying to get a frequency that's located, you know, somewhere at the end of the switch or the end of the pot for the fine tuning, you'll be able to flick the range and have a bit of play on either end of that, um, just so that you're not going to have some frequencies excluded. And if I change, I'll change this back to sine wave, turn the level up a wee bit. Um, and so if I flick this all the way across to high, um, and I adjust my scope to catch up. So now we're looking at a frequency of um, 8 kilohertz. And I can just, I'll just wind this up and you can just have a look. Winding, winding, winding. So you can see down here, you can see the frequency and the amplitude. Amplitude's quite consistent through these frequencies. Starting to go down here. 20 kilohertz, 25 kilohertz. I'll change this to catch up. Still winding, of course this is a 10 turn pot. Okay, 70 kilohertz. And so once we get to, you know, oh, okay, quickly change there. So once we get to basically 100 kilohertz, we've got a lot of play with this 10 turn pot and we're getting pretty consistent amplitude. We're starting to lose a bit of level. After 100 kilohertz, things start changing pretty rapidly and I'm just turning the pot here at the same speed I was before and suddenly you know that last little bit is taking us all the way up to 1 megahertz so so usable range of this circuit 1.5 hertz to, one, uh, to 100 kilohertz uh, and so that still makes it a very very useful um, range so quickly what I'll show you now is I'll just show you the square wave output I'm just going to change my oscilloscope over and I'll turn this down. Okay, so it's not a very happy looking square wave though, is it? Alright, so 
Now, what frequency are we at? Are we at? We're at 100 kilohertz. So, at 100 kilohertz, just you're you're getting a reasonable amount of distortion with the um, with the square wave form there. What, you know, we're seeing a little bit of charge discharge kind of catch up slew rate, whatever you want to call it, action going on. Um, so, you know, what what we can do, this would still be usable like this, depending on what you're wanting to do, because this actually outputs reasonably high so if I just turn this up here so let's have a wee look here we're getting what 7.6 volts okay so that's you know that's pretty good so if you're doing 5 volt logic you know you're gonna you're gonna be getting you know a nice clocking frequency here of course this is at you know almost 100 kilohertz as we wind it down I'll turn that back up as we wind it down we uh, oh wrong way catching up you know we're starting to get a much cleaner looking square wave there okay so this is um, an analog analog square wave and you know useful up to 7.6 volts that's totally dimed but you using the level control you get quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of play there okay well, look I'm gonna stop there I don't think there's anything else I can say other than it's got um, I'll just re quickly recap You've got fine tuning control with a three way range switch, which basically takes you between 1 hertz and uh, 100 kilohertz with um, reasonable resolution. You've, the sine and triangle output is switched, uh, and they both share a common level control. And then there is a separate dedicated output for square wave. The square wave is a fixed duty cycle of 50%. Uh, you can't change the on or the off time, basically, that means. and uh, you know, so its applications will be limited to uh, you know whatever will basically fit into that category. You could use it for um, clocking digital electronics. You could use it to test a piezo or something like that. Um, and otherwise, you know, if you're wanting to use the uh, sinusoid waves, you'll get some nice um, pure tones which you can uh, use, say, for audio analysis of your electronics projects. All right, so that's basically it. Runs on 12 volts DC, and yeah. Uh, that's all I can say. Thank you for watching, and I hope it wasn't too painful. <laughs> Cheers.